All right, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. So today I have a different topic. I want to talk a little bit about upcoming games 2021. I picked my 15 favorite titles that will be hopefully released 2021. And it's looking really spicy. Lots of sequels, to be honest, but hey, man, if it works, never change a running system, eh? I would say we jump right into it. All right, let's get this list started, and our first title will be Dark Tide. Dark Tide is well, you take Vermintide and you put it in the Warhammer 40k universe. Well, uh, no big surprise because the developers are Fat Rock. It looks really interesting. It looks really cool. Lots of gore. Very dark. Love it already. The melee system looks almost—I mean, it's just a trailer, like copy paste from the Vermintide system, which is. Not a bad thing. If it's done right, why not use it again? I'm kind of concerned though that there is an ogre. Does the emperor allow this? Hmm, I don't know. He looks awesome though. Let, let's be for real there. So it will be a four player co op game and you play different missions, I guess. The only thing that I'm missing here is, and that might be be a problem in the future because Vermintide in my opinion suffers from the same issue there is no PvP. I hope they will do a versus mode like uh, Left for that or Back for Blood is doing it. It has the potential for it and I think they even tried it at one point with Vermintide. If you have only a PvE game the content loop will end at one point. So game looks promising, looks awesome, PvE only so far. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Let's see how they will put everything together in 2021. All right, and next up we have Witchfire. So Witchfire is developed by the astronauts. The astronauts um, also created the vanishing of Ethan Carter with hopefully a release date of 2021. So I'm following this title now for quite a while and I have to say I'm getting here some Dark Souls slash Bloodborne First person shooter wipes, and that would be amazing. The atmosphere of the game is pretty cinematic, pretty immersive. Love that, by the way. Enemy design seems to be cool. The movement set, the physics, the visual effects, all of that looks pretty awesome. There's just one thing that eh, I don't know about that. You will see that in a bit. They also put damage numbers over their head the moment you shoot them. I'm not a huge fan of that. I hope this will be just optional. You can see it right there. You blast them and then all these numbers pop up. I want to keep my cinematic full immersion mode. That would be the dream. A, a Bloodborne slash Dark Souls first person shooter with these unique enemies that you see in the background. Give me now. All right. Looks awesome. Let's have a look at the next one. Then our next title is Back for Blood which I will just call Left 4 Dead 3 because in my opinion that's exactly what it is. Might be wrong though. We were already able to play for a whole weekend like an early stage gameplay from that where they allowed us to play one of the campaigns so not the versus mode yet. So for those who did not play Left 4 Dead, I don't think there are a lot of people out there but let me just quickly explain how this game works. So you have up to four people that fight the infected in the campaign. And you also have a versus mode where four players play against another team of four players who control the infected. There are some unique new features, I have to admit, that uh, makes this not Left 4 Dead 3. For example, you can build your own card decks, which gives you unique abilities every time you play it with a different deck. That is cool. I will explain this a little bit more in detail because I am working right now on a video where I showcase the game and explain a little bit how it works. So far, looks promising, I have to say. Turtle Rock Studios, again, are the developers, so exactly the guys who made Left 4 Dead. And release date, June 22, so that's in half a year. I hope they can do it. It will really be a question how good they can do the versus mode. The campaign mode is fun, but you played it a couple times, and at one point, it's just... Yeah, the content loop is just not there. The versus mode will be the deciding factor. Will this be a very good game or will it be one for the trash pit? Let's jump to the next one. Alright, and then we have Scavengers, the 
only BR title on my list. And I'm pretty proud of that because I think we have enough BR titles for now. Now, why did I put Scavengers on the list? Because mm, most of the people that know me, they are aware of the fact that I absolutely do not like BR games due to the randomness that you naturally encounter while playing these games. I mean, I played PUBG for over a thousand hours. I played some Fortnite, yes, and other BR games. And you just drop with the enemy in the same location and they just find like a second before you do that super fat high tier loot goblin chest and have everything they need to just strike you down while you're still running around in your box of shorts, you know. Uh, not the greatest gameplay experience in my opinion. And Scavengers tackles this problem in my opinion very well because you have in this PvEVP sandbox survival class based shooter, Jesus Christ what kind of title is that by the way, a leveling and a crafting system during your match and this is pretty amazing so you drop already with some starting gear but the high end tier you can only get that by leveling up and by finding the crafting materials to get that high tier equipment. I played already the first play test and I have to say it's promising they still have some issues especially the, the map design is not that great to be completely honest I can't show you anything because there was an NDA but otherwise the potential is definitely there three people in a group so you don't need lots of friends which is uh, pretty nice for some of us I guess and it seemed more or less balanced um, sure, we will have to see how the final product looks like. You have your unique classes, so you have people with a bow, you have people with shotguns, you have people with these protection fields, and melee seems to be somewhat viable. It's just becoming a super big clusterfuck at the end when the dropship lands that picks you up. But, let's see, I'm looking forward to the next playtest. Alright, next title. Alright, so this title has to be on the list for 2021. Exactly, Darkest Dungeon 2 from Red Hook Studios. Man, I can't wait. I, I think I put hundreds of hours in the first part. It was just amazing, the atmosphere, character design, the combat design. Normally, I love PvP games or at least PvEVP games. But this one, this one is an exception, man. You want a game to chill, you want to... A game to absolutely forgot time and space. Darkest Dungeon was a solid pick. More than solid, I would say. Of course, there's no Darkest Dungeon 2. And so far, we didn't see much. And I really hope that they will make it in 2021. There is one grain of salt probably for a few people out there. It will be epic exclusive at the beginning. I personally don't mind about this. But I know that a few people out there are not the biggest fan of <laughs> Epic. Uh, understandable, don't get me wrong. I would love to have this on Steam. I hope it will come to Steam pretty soonish. So, yeah, Darkest Dungeon 2. I would say we jump right to the next title. And here we go with another sequel that will be Hellblade 2. And I, I mean, I'm repeating myself here. I can't wait for this one. Um, if you like all this Norse mythology and Celtic culture... Hellblade was a solid pick for a beautiful single-player experience. The playtime was not that long, but everything else, it looked stunning. The gameplay was amazing. The story was unique, I would say. I'm looking forward to this one, part two. There's no specific release date, just 2021. So I hope that Ninja Theory will not wait until the end of the year. What would be pretty cool if they give us VR support again. Hellblade 1 had VR support, didn't play it yet, actually planning on doing so. And it would be amazing if we would have that for Hellblade 2 from the start. Alright. And dude, I think I think one of the best things about these uh, Norse mythology games is the soundtrack. Alright, enough uh, love for Hellblade 2, let's jump to the next one. So our next title is Deathloop. I almost didn't put it on the list because at first it looked kind of weird, but then uh, I saw that actually Arcane Studios is the development team, and you probably know them from Dishonored and Prey and Dishonored 2, so yes, you know what? 
better check out the title that these guys are producing. So Deathloop is a single player but can also be a multiplayer experience if I understood it correctly. So the single player, you're cold, the assassin, you have to take out eight targets. It's a death loop, so every time you die, you start from the beginning, you maybe adjust your gear, you have to have a different tactical approach to kill your target. There is a multiplayer element because there's a second assassin. Let me just look that up. Her name is Juliana. So that is controlled by a different player and you can basically sneak into another player's campaign to kill Colt and keep him imprisoned in the loop. I'm getting here some Dark Souls vibes. I know I'm saying Dark Souls a lot, but that's basically invasions. <laughs> Looks interesting. Um, by the way, the multiplayer experience is completely optional. So if you don't want that, you don't have to get this multiplayer experience. You just play it in BB. Looks promising. And the crazy thing is this game is coming out soon. May 21st. I will definitely try this one. Interesting. Next title. Alright, so um, I think this is a no-brainer. This is probably on everybody's list. Dying Light 2. Dying Light, the first one, was probably one of the best co-op gaming experiences I ever had. Story was A+, plus. the movement, combat with these um, parkour elements was just amazing. The second part will probably have all these elements again and they also announced that the decisions that you make during the game will have more impact on the different factions that exist in this game. Which is pretty cool. I would love to see more consequences. Man, I can't wait to be in this world again at night, shitting my pants, trying to get my crafting materials and my quests done together with a friend. This will be, this will be probably pretty amazing. All right, next up. All right, so the last game was a co-op title. So how about I put another co-op title in the list? So here we have Evil West with a release date 2021. So nothing specific yet from Flying Wild Hawk. They made Shadow Warriors. That wasn't a bad game. So getting good co-op games is really, really difficult in my opinion. There are really not a lot. This one looks so far pretty amazing, so I'm getting my Dark Souls vibes again, but with guns. And you're fighting vampiric hordes. Slaughtering vampires with a friend? In the Evil West? Yeah, sign me up for that one. Can't wait to try it out. Next title. Alright, let's jump into another PvEVP game, Hood, Outlaws and Legends. I already played it a little bit during a playtest weekend. It's promising. It has a few things it needs to take care of. For example, balance is way off, PvE is way too easy. But the idea looks very promising. Um, the matches are rather short, which is cool. You play with two of your friends, so it's a 3v3 game versus the PvE world. It is pretty nice because it's not just brain that slaughtering all the AI that is on the map. You also can play with stealth. To be honest though, during the playtest, uh, stealth was kind of optional. You know how I play my stealth games. And I hope they will tweak this a little bit more. A few classes were outperforming the others, but again, it was just a playtest and that's what playtests are for. It looks amazing. I know lots of people out there especially my community, mentioned Hood, Outlaws and Legends a lot. Looks promising, has some work to do, and they don't have that much time anymore. I mean, the release date is May. Yo, that is only, not even five more months, dude. And I get to work, guys. Looks great, feels great. Needs some balance, though, and it also needs some rework regarding the gameplay loop. I'm gonna keep an eye out for that one though. Okay, let's jump into the horror games now, or at least one. Um, there's Scorn. Scorn looks uh, like a very, or it has the potential to be a very unique horror game. Um, everything that you see in the game is 
basically made out of biomass. So your guns are out of bone, flesh. Like, I think even your ammunition sometimes are teeth. It's looking very gory, very spoopy. I mean, yeah, nice. Uh, the only downside of this game is it feels a little bit like they can't finish it. So looking forward to that one. I think this will be insanely scary because it's something new. We saw already a few gameplay trailers. They didn't show that much, to be honest. I hope they can do it in 2021. I don't want to wait another year to play Scorn. The play alpha, I think, was only a couple minutes. And only for those who backed the game. Which, sadly, I wasn't able to do anymore. So I couldn't play this it myself. But as you can see, the monster design is already pretty unique. Yeah, to, to put it into rather friendly words. Because Jesus effing Christ. Yeah. Um, check out Scorn. I think this will be a good title, if <laughs> it will ever release. Okay, let's jump into another sequel, Sons of the Forest, as the sequel of The Forest. Duh. Um, the Forest was pretty amazing, with all the sandbox features that it had, and you can see in the trailer, lots of that got polished. I mean, we are not alone anymore, we have now a multi lagged girlfriend, so that is already pretty nice. You have way more weapons that look more specialized, like you get pistols, you get shotguns, you get a crossbow. It's not just the stuff that you crafted yourself. Looks promising. I hope it will be as scary and I hope that the story will be again completely bonkers. Well, with a free leg girlfriend that most likely will be pretty crazy. So far, um... I think I will probably play this more with friends. The experience alone is already great, but the base building was a little bit tiresome. Although as you can see, they reworked lots of the animations, it's looking way better the base building. Like you can see that guy there dragging a lock behind him. Yeah, and the enemy designers again, what the actual fuck. Love it. Sons of the Forest, release date 2021. Yeah, I don't know about you, and it's kind of weird, but uh, it's kind of not getting old for me. Resident Evil Village. Uh, I think it's Resident Evil 8 now. I like that they went back to their roots with Resident Evil 7, because there were a few parts where Resident Evil was not a horror game anymore. It was more of a action gore shooter and nothing anymore that had to do with horror elements. So yeah, looking forward to this one. I like my horror games, I like Resident Evil. Nothing more to say. Let's go to the next one. All right, then we have another <laughs> horror game. Little Nightmares 2. Yes or no, this list is full of sequels. I actually don't mind that because uh, if the title is good, give me more from that. I recently got reminded how fun these games can be by my, I think the game was called, yeah, Wick, where you played as this little candle. That was pretty fun. So I have high hopes for Little Nightmares 2. There is the last of the horror games out of my list and I would say we jump to the game right now that I'm looking forward the most. Mmm, yes, dude, I was waiting for this one. Stalker 2. Man, it's been ages. The first Stalker got released with Shadow of Chernobyl 2007. Then we had Clear Sky 2008 and Call of Pripyat 2009. Man, they were really fast with the sequels and then nothing. So I'm pretty happy that they announced that. I try to not get too hi hyped. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm already super hyped. Because the trailers are actually not showing a lot and they want to release it 2021. Okay. Please don't mess this up. It's only a PvE game. Still looking forward to that one. I'm already going crazy. 
I would love to see a PvEVP game in the Stalker universe. I know a few people tried it already with Fear the Wolves, but that didn't turn out too great. So yeah, Stalker 2 is winning the list for me, but I'm super biased. <laughs> um, there was Metro Exodus trying to rival the Stalker series. Metro Exodus, or the Metro series in general, was very good. But Stalker was better. Sorry. What kind of game am I missing in my list? Is there anything you have on your radar for 2021 and it's not here in this video? Drop it in the comment section, share it with me. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. i see you in the next one. Until then, have a good day and bye bye.